Hola, muy buenas tardes. Buenas tardes, Frances. Buenas. Um, qué bien estar aquí contigo y qué, qué, qué honor y qué privilegio poder compartir este rato y este diálogo. Muchísimas gracias por venir desde California. Ah, es un placer estar aquí contigo, María. Tenemos con nosotros una mujer muy especial. Frances es toda una referente como científica, ingeniera, innovadora y emprendedora. Es catedrática de Ingeniería Química, Bioingeniería y Bioquímica en la Universidad de Tecnología de California y ha ganado muchísimos premios, entre ellos el Premio Nobel de Química en 2018, lo que la convirtió en la quinta mujer de la historia en ganarlo. Uh, Frances es una mujer valiente, curiosa y arriesgada para la ciencia y para la vida. Uh, al terminar su carrera en Ingeniería Mecánica y Aeroespacial, recorrió en moto Milán, Estambul, ida y vuelta. Ha vivido en muchos países eh, de cinco continentes, eh, también en España, en 1976, estuvo viviendo en Madrid durante tres meses y trabajando de ingeniera, e incluso visitó Cáceres, mi ciudad. Eh, habla cinco idiomas, eh, toca varios instrumentos musicales, y lo mejor de todo es su calidad y calidez humana. Frances es muy generosa, increíblemente inspiradora y todo un modelo a seguir. Así que lo mejor es que la escuchéis a ella. Frances Arnold, um, estamos preparadas para empezar el diálogo y lo vamos a hacer en inglés. Empezamos. Empezamos. <laughs> so, Frances, uh, you developed a revolutionary method to engineer proteins and uh, were awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 2018 for your pioneering work on the directed evolution of enzymes. Uh, it was so thrilling to witness that. So, would you briefly explain uh, what's the directed evolution of enzymes and what uh, can we use it for? Don't worry. No chemistry lecture tonight. <laughs> 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 but enzymes, these are the chemists of the natural world. They're responsible for all of the chemistry of life. They're encoded in DNA, our genetic material. And so to create new versions of these, we can breed them, just like you breed cats and dogs. Only I do this in the test tube, and much faster than breeding cats and dogs, for applications that range from diagnosing and treating disease, to making jet fuel from renewable resources, and yes, even better laundry detergents. Enzymes are everywhere. Yeah, that is fascinating. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, using the power of evolution to revolutionize chemistry. And it's been only the first uh, 30 years of directed evolution. Well, of enzymes, but millennia of breeding. Right? Everything from rats to racehorses to rice, we've been breeding and modifying the biological world. I just use this remarkable process called evolution. But yes. Maria, to move forward and solve real problems like climate change or feeding, clothing, housing 8 billion people on our planet soon, we need science. And that will take science. We need investment in science. So how do we promote this interest in science for the future? Yes, this is an important question. Uh, so science gives uh, solutions to problems. And we've seen that with the current pandemic. And we have another worse pandemic that affects everyone, climate change. Um, I think everyone is more aware than ever about the importance of uh, the important science have in our daily lives and, and the need to invest in science. So why not using this moment to really base our economy on science and innovation? <laughs> if we do so, uh, we will better prepare for the coming pandemics and we can use that, that to, to build a sustainable future. Um, I think, I mean, we agree on that, but we cannot do this alone. We, we need uh, everyone, all the people, and especially the people in power, 
to trust and support science and to make it a priority. Indeed. Yes. <laughs> So in relation to this, Frances, you are not just an academic, but also an entrepreneur. Um, why, why do you start companies? Well, research isn't useful until someone uses it. It's that simple. And it's the entrepreneurs who take the advances in science and all that investment that we make in understanding the scientific world and translate those into the products and services that we need to benefit everyone. So I've been lucky over the years to have brilliant students who love to do that, that translational work. And a great example is a company we founded called Provivi that makes non-toxic alternatives to insecticides. If you just use natural sex pheromones, to confuse male moths. So the female emits a little plume of a Chanel number no. five of a sex pheromone. <laughs> if you go and spray that in the field, suddenly he's confused and he can't find her. And guess what? No babies. Nobody dies. It's all, uh, it, it helps the crops, right? It protects the crops, it protects the beneficial insects, and it protects the human beings. So now we employ more than 200 people and provide pheromones all over the world. But Maria, you have some of that entrepreneurial and adventuresome spirit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and you care about what happens with your research. So tell me, why do you do that in Copenhagen and not, not in Spain? Yeah, so I, um, I moved, uh, I, so I left Spain when I finished my PhD uh, almost 10 years ago. And when I was doing my postdoc at Stanford University, I had to decide whether, where to build my independent career. I could stay in the US, I could come back to Europe. I have both possibilities and decided to come back to Europe and start my independent career uh, at the University of Copenhagen. So Denmark, uh, really has a lot of funding opportunities, uh, both from private foundations and from the Danish government. So it's not the Danish weather what made me go to <laughs> Copenhagen, it's that investment in science and in young researchers what did. And yeah, I wish it was <laughs> the same here in Spain. Yes. So now let's move to the US and uh, talk about another piece of wonderful news that uh, came in the beginning of the year when you were appointed the co-chair of uh, President Joe, Joe Biden's uh, Science and Technology Advisory Council. And in your speech, you emphasize the importance of putting science back to work for the benefit of all people and build a society that is worth passing on to our children and grandchildren. It was such a beautiful and powerful speech. So why did you answer that call from the White House? Well, like, like so many in the United States, I was, I was stung by the dismissal of science by our previous president. And it was pretty clear when I was asked to serve President Biden that I would say yes. It's a lot of work, but I, I didn't even hesitate. And, and what I see is a very different environment in Washington, D.C. now, starting with major investments in education and in research. And those investments, we believe, will pay off in important things. And also, a big thing happened to me during the pandemic, and my first grandchild was born. I believe it's our responsibility to pass on a planet to his generation that's better or at least as good as the one that we all have enjoyed. And I think I can help do that in the White House. Yes, that's, that's really wonderful. And, and it's such a peace of mind to see that science is back in the current administration with this amazing team, team of scientists. Yeah. So, so Francis, uh, let's talk about protecting something you talked about before, protecting our planet and the climate crisis. I think this is something both of us care a lot about and, and this is present in our research. So 
why is it urgent to protect our planet and our ecosystems and, and what are some of the scientific solutions for that? Well, we're, we're all connected, as you well know, to one another, but especially to the rest of the biological world. And biodiversity is critical to human survival. Although I might vote a few viruses off the planet for a while, <laughs> but we, we need just, just about everything. Uh, my, my work, most of my own research, is on sustainable chemistry. And that's how do we make what we need to live without depleting limited natural resources and without continuing to pollute our planet. Um, we have to figure out ways to do that. And I think that biology and engineering and enzymes, enzymes, the best chemists, they can help do that. But Maria, let's talk about climate change. And, and what do you think we need to tackle, uh, tackle this problem, wean ourselves off of fossil fuels? Yes, so it's urgent uh, to replace uh, fossil fuels with renewable resources and clean technologies to, that allow us to produce like the materials, the energy, chemicals and fuels we use in our daily lives. And uh, this is urgent because emissions of greenhouse gases keep increasing as we keep burning fossil fuels, for instance, for transportation, and industry, and for the production of electricity. So to tackle this problem, um, in what I investigate is new materials that uh, convert renewable resources into green fuels like green hydrogen or clean electricity, valuable chemicals. And uh, this is very promising to decarbonize our society and uh, and build a sustainable future. So something important, I think, is that in Spain, we are rich in these renewable resources like solar and wind energy. So I think we have really an exciting opportunity ahead. Indeed. Um, and this green revolution uh, uh, is, uh, I think, young people are, are crucial to drive it. So, so Francis, would you like to give a message to the younger generations? Indeed, to all generations, let's stop pumping carbon out of the ground and dumping it in the atmosphere. And to the young generations, let's insist that we stay the course and please be like Maria and invent the technology that allows us to do that efficiently and economically. That's really important. Yes, so yeah, please do so. I think we need, uh, we need you all to rethink our future and to fight climate change. Um, so you are such an inspirational role model for women in science, and we are talking about the present and uh, uh, what young people want to do uh, with their lives. And unfortunately, just a very small percentage of girls want to study science or engineering. So the last question I wanted to ask you is, um, what would be your advice to encourage young girls and, and women to pursue a career in science or engineering? Well, for the first thing, just don't leave this fun opportunity just for the men. That doesn't make any sense. I've had so many wonderful experiences working with young people, inventing things, starting companies, traveling the world, meeting heads of state, I even got invited to a really nice party in Stockholm in 2018. <laughs> it's a very good party. If you ever get invited, you should, <laughs> you should definitely go, especially you scientists. Uh, but if you want to do something important and impactful for the world, there's no better basis, in my opinion, than having a, a, a foundation in science and engineering. And you get to learn for your whole life long. Yes, what an important and inspiring message. Please, let's thank Frances Arnold. <laughs> uh, 
And remember, science is wonderful, it's fun, it solves problems. We need you all in the fight against climate change. And uh, we cannot do it without you girls, so remember that. Thank you so much, everyone. Muchísimas gracias. And thank you so much, Frances, for your time. Thank you.